Welcome to Fame Adjacent. Welcome back to Fame Adjacent. Gosh, Victoria, <laughs> this shouldn't be their first time. This should be like their second time. It should be. Ah. But in case there's someone new, hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to meet you. Oh, it's nice. Well, you know what? Me. I can't. And I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak English. They're at French, I guess. Um, hey. So, <laughs> so obviously, this is going to be our episode with Sophina the Diva. And Sophina the Diva is. She's an actress. She is a gymnast. She's done all the things. She's done all the things. Uh, so, obviously, obviously, yeah, no, a lot of you guys know her. And she went viral in 2016 for her video with UCLA. She's obviously an all-American gymnast. She's been doing gymnastics her whole life. She still helps kids with gymnastics currently as well. And she also is an actress. She had her... Her pilot, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sofina the Diva. Yep. And, it's on YouTube. Which is really funny. It's yeah. really funny. <laughs> you guys can go check it out. And then also, there's so many things. But she's also a commercial model. And she's also been on Ellen. I have to mention that twice. Twice. So she's done it with a team and then also solo with a performance on the all viral video. So we're really yeah. excited to talk to her. And yeah. Love. Would you mention anything else before we introduce Sofina? I don't think so. Yeah. No. No. Like, let's see. Well, I mean, you're going to Fashion Week. Oh, yeah. I'm going to Fashion Week. So I'm going to Fashion Week tonight. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go help out our sponsor slash partnership, Cheaters Brand, which I'm wearing right now. There they are. Lovely. lovely. With my DK. DK. DKNY. I that. Wow, I'm struggling today. It's been a long week for both of us. So, well, let's and now, bring out Sophina. Yeah, yeah and our yeah. chat with Sophina. See you guys in a second. <laughs> Welcome on to Fame Adjacent, Sophina. Hey, so Sophina. Hello. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. Yes. Seriously. Such so, a busy lady. I know. You're literally such a busy person. <laughs> like, we're so lucky to have you come on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Stop it. Thank you. I'm, I'm super excited to be here. Yay. Love. Well, let's start off with saying how we know each other. Yeah. So, obviously, we met each other on a set. I won't say the name because well, <laughs> yeah, they don't need the publicity. I mean, and yeah, also, like, like, they can probably... They can't find it, but um, no, who cares? It's Beverly Hills Social. We did like a little, <laughs> I don't care. You guys, we're already starting off with a good rocky start. So, okay. We, um, so we all met there. Mm -hmm. um, Victoria did not proceed, obviously. I did not sign the contract. But then me and you did a couple of shootings together and that was really fun. It was. It's a couple of years now and it's just been so long. I know. So catch up here. Right? Oh my God. As all people in LA do. Yeah. You meet and then you catch up on each other's podcasts. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so normal. I mean, I mean, content, right? Is That's that's the biggest thing right now, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God. Oh, Michael. Okay. Oh gosh. Let's see. Okay. So then, formal walking through your history, yes. obviously. Okay. World famous gymnast. Let's talk about it. <laughs> So, She's like, I don't want to be. It's like, what? I'm shy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but since, okay, obviously gymnastics was your big focus. Um, did you have a struggle with balancing between, did you have other endeavors that you wanted to do and then trying to balance between those growing up? Oh, definitely. So um, my sister and I are really close in age. We're only like 15 months apart. So my mom put us in like every activity possible. We were in like boys and girls club, but did like basketball and soccer and skiing and tennis and every sport. Um, and I stuck to gymnastics. I love that one. But my sister and I both did dancing. And so we grew up always dance together. <laughs> I saw that. I know you're good. Um, <laughs> dance together. Um, she tried gymnastics. She hated it. Um, and then we just like did the whole entertainment stuff together. So I was juggling that with doing gymnastics. Um, and at one point I actually quit gymnastics actually many times and um, was pursuing like acting and dancing full time with my sister. And we were on a show called Hip Hop Harry. And that was a fun, a blast, like the best time ever. And like, I was just doing a lot of like great stuff. And I feel like that could have progressed, but then something inside of me was like, I'm really missing gymnastics. And gymnastics is a sport that you can't do for a really long time. You retire young. So I was like, you know, let's give gymnastics a full chance. And then when you're done, you can go back to like entertainment. So that's what I did. Got you. Okay. I didn't really talk about the balancing thing, but kind of. <laughs> <laughs> well, a little was, bit. I mean, the balance was essentially that you paused on gymnastics and then mm -hmm. went into right. dance and everything too. There was, yeah, there was times in practice when like I was doing 
I was in gymnastics and dancing, but I would leave practice to go to like auditions and stuff and they were just weren't having it. So it was like, at that point, I kind of had to choose. Yeah. Oh no, fair. Yeah, no, I mean, I was also an athlete and I did um, water polo, swimming and diving mm. in college. <gasps> so, and I did the club and you know, the Olympic development program and club, all that stuff. So like, I know what, <laughs> she's, round of applause. <laughs> I did water polos. Like, I didn't know it was that hard and rigorous until like I went to college and like watched games and stuff. The things that go on underwater. I have Listen. scars. Hips below, below my hips, there's many scars on my legs from like scratches, I don't know, punches. There's a reason that water aerobics is like touted as being hard too. Like doing anything also underwater mm -hmm. in the water, that shit's hard. Oh, oh yeah. Thank you. I mean, but I, that's what I, that's my reaction when I think like, look at gymnastics and even yeah. on land for me, I'm like, oh, you don't flip around. Like you don't use your feet and just kind of flutter. Oh <laughs> shit, that's work. Like, mm, <laughs> yucky. <laughs> different work. Different work. Two different worlds. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> it's like, no, it's intense. I wanted to do gymnastics growing up, but I did competition dance and acting mm -hmm. growing up. So then, but I always tried to do, I would like walk sidewalks and do a little, and I thought that was really doing something. <laughs> so I understand. Oh my God. <laughs> really your whole journey. <laughs> yes. God. Um, so then also, since you were also on Hip Hop Harry and mm -hmm. then having this entertainment endeavor too with school, did you have trouble balancing like social life with oh. that too? Oh. oh my gosh. Oh, where do I begin? So, <laughs> yeah. While you're competing, did your coaches allow you to date? Because I know some coaches don't in some sports. Right. They... I mean, I was never told I couldn't date, but I just never did. I, I had my first kiss my freshman year of college <laughs> was my first kiss ever. Um, and it was by accident. Like some random guy just came up to me on New Year's. Yeah. So it, I was at a New Year's party and like some <laughs> random guy, I was on the phone with like a friend and some random guy just came in and like kissed me. And I was like, someone just kissed me. <laughs> yeah. Not a drive by. No, literally. Um, so yeah. So yes, I, I wasn't told I couldn't like date, but I just, I never did. I didn't have time for it. But in general, like social life was crazy because I was homeschooled middle school. Mm -hmm. And then my mom's like, I, you know, I need you to be social. I don't want you to be like a robot and like a deer in headlights. Cause a lot of times that's what like Jim is known as like, just like, you know, not social. Um, and so I went to high school, but most kids go like our friends with their middle school people and then like go to high school. Yeah. So I didn't know anyone. I am a social person, but at that time I was like, I came back, I would eat lunch in the library and I came back and I was like, mom, how do you make friends? And I was just like, so sad. And she was like, okay, do you have like, you know, you have those friends that are in class, but like, aren't really your friends. Right. So she's like, do you have any of those? You know, yeah. like your class friends. Yeah. Um, and I had this one girl, I don't know why I say she's Asian. Cause like our group just had to be funny. Anyway, so there's this Asian girl and she was so sweet to me in class. And I was like, one day I was like, hi. Um, and my mom coached me on this whole thing. She was like, just go up to her. So I was like, hey, like, what do you do at lunch? And she's like, oh, I just hang out in this area at lunch, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, can I hang out with you? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, okay. I was so nervous. Um, but we ended up being friends and it was like a weird mix of people it was like me mixed and then she was asian and then it was like two mexicans and then afghan so it was like diverse group but we became friends like throughout the whole year um she ended up leaving like in two years but mm -hmm. our group like stuck there so that was cool i ended up having friends but i left all the time to go to gymnastics so i like didn't really hang out with them except for that time but then my junior year i fractured my back so i couldn't do like gymnastics anymore and so i was like all right i can't flip but i can still dance so my mom made me join the dance team because i had been out of dance for a really long time so i was like really like insecure about dancing again because it had been so long but i was like all right so i auditioned made the varsity dance team had a group of friends and like got to go to prom and like I was super social by then. Junior, senior year, I was just like a social butterfly. So it was like going from a nerd, no friends, to like being social butterflies. So I, I lived every lifestyle in college, in, in high school. Right, I was gonna say you had your whole, like she's all that all by yourself right. without any coaxing whatsoever. Just like a fractured back is what brought it on. Exactly. Who would have thought? And then going back to the friends thing, did you ever like, was your, in gymnastics, do you guys like, is it clicky? 
like kind of like water polo. I know water polo, <laughs> her face <laughs> gave a little face there, but um, my, my water polo team would always sit together at lunch. Like we would always go out to parties together. Very, very clicky. Okay. Like, is, is gymnastics like that? Because a lot of sports are like that. And some right. Sports, like tennis isn't, a lot of individual right. sports. True. Um, yes and no. So like gymnastics, it's not like a, you can't do it in high school. So you can't do it at school. So I wouldn't yeah. say it's clicky in that way um but I mean sometimes just girls will be girls you know so it's not I wouldn't say necessarily it could be the sport but it just might be like girls um mm -hmm. are a bit clicky but it's just like weird uh, yeah just it, it, it can be clicky for sure that's for sure I just remember like yeah. weird things happening all the time but yeah <laughs> yeah well even because I know from doing competition dance like that was one of the big things was um like my girlfriends from high school mm -hmm. all went to different competition studios than me. So we were friends in high school, but then on the weekends we we're like, watch out. And would be like super intense. Yeah. But so if you were with like one gym in particular, was there ever so like, we didn't do it to each other as friends, but mm -hmm. there was little sabotage where you'd maybe like block someone in the wings before, oh. so they couldn't make their timing. Did anything like that happen in gymnastics that you ever heard about? Oh, not that you particularly did. That's but. saucy. That's yeah. like a, but not like a, not like a Tanya Bennett thing. Or oh, God, Tanya Bennett. Harding. I was like, who is Tanya Bennett? <laughs> I tried. You guys, I tried. You I know what? Remember. I'm bad with names, so Sweet. I'm not. Following you. I love um, <laughs> weird things happened all the time. I mean, I feel like it's more like the bullying aspect, at least that I experienced. So mm -hmm. like, there was times when like. I was at that phase where I didn't know if like you should, should shave, like, you know, so I shaved my armpits, but I didn't shave my legs yet. And this girl like in front of everyone was like, you forgot to shave your legs. And so like, then everyone was like, you know, just weird. And then another time, like being black, it wasn't a popular at that time to do your baby hairs, but I always did them. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was another actually like mixed race girl, but in front of everyone, she's like, do you use that toothbrush on your teeth too? That's so disgusting. And I was like, oh, no. no, I obviously have a different toothbrush. And then like, there was other times when like someone like need me to like get off the bar. Um, oh. One girl like punched me before, like it was just a lot. Yeah, so I just went through a lot, I will say. But at that time I would say I was like, I didn't know how to stick up for myself. And maybe I was like a people pleaser, pushover. I am no longer that. But at that time I was just went and like told my mom everything. And I was like, what do I do? So, yeah. Do you so, think it's because you had a great career? I mean, you had a very successful career. So, I mean, compared to a lot of your teammates too. So do you think there was a little jealousy, do you think, that you experienced? Because I feel like bullying stems from je jealousy. It really oh, does. Definitely. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that 100%. Because mm -hmm. where else, why else would you be a bully? <laughs> really, if, you know? Unless you're just having a bad life in general and just want to <laughs> take that out, then yeah. that part too. So. Or having bad life and you're an asshole. Double whammy. It could be. A and then if you're having a bad life, then you're going to be jealous of someone having a, a good life anyway. So right. it's, I think it just stems from, I think, I think of it now is like, it's, you're not the problem. It's them and they're going through something, but you still need to know how to defend yourself and stick up for yourself. For sure. What do you mean? You got there. Yep. I'm here now. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, at least I feel like telling your mom also still was helpful because instead of you having to take it into your own hands, you got someone else to get involved. So mm -hmm. oh, yeah. that works. She was that at a time when you were one of the few like black girls there too? Was that maybe yes. part of it? Definitely yeah. part of it as well. Yeah. I, man, I, I would come in and do gymnastics with like my fro and people would get mad and I had beads that would hit me in the head. I did the most, I will say with, <laughs> with being black, but yeah. um, I think that definitely was part of it that went into it. Did you make a choice? And cause obviously I know with gymnastics and having, like you said, like beads in your hair and stuff like that too. Was it because you were one of the few, did you feel like you had to do more mm -hmm. to present mm -hmm. as black as opposed to assimilate to more of like a white kind of aesthetic? Especially Actually, gymnastics. Right. Yeah, so I would say no. Um, so I grew up in Temecula, which is a predominantly white city, but I didn't really notice it that much. Um, I don't, I guess, I don't know. But I guess to me, I wasn't trying. My mom just like, 
my mom is the black one and my dad is the Puerto Rican. So mm-hmm. her being black, she was just was used to doing those things to like our hair. So I wasn't like, you need to do my hair like this in order, blah, blah. I was just like, oh, she said my curls are beautiful. I love my curls. I'm going to wear my curls. Like, so it, it was just more of maybe being naive and just, I, I, I don't think I saw color that much at that time, if I'm being honest. But then I did notice certain things that people said stuff. I mean, that's great that your mom was so supportive in that and like really kind of held your hand through that as well. Because it's Definitely. nice to have someone kind of, I don't know, it's nice to hear like, you know, I love your curls because you don't really hear that very often. And no. we're pretty self-critical, especially all three of us have curly hair. Like, right, right. I was literally just complaining to Victoria. I was like, oh my God, my hair is such a mess. I had to pat it down for an hour. Like if I brush out my hair right now, and then I immediately question it. why a brush. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, <"Wah." laughs> Hey, you're going to brush it out? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> if I, I may. Forgot. You know, I barely have any hair. It's like, you know. It's, hey, I mean, you're a guy, so. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a different. different. It's a different, yeah. You know, yeah. I can just kind of hide it under a hat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Reason why I have protective styles a lot of the time. Because it's just hard. It's hard. But I love it. I love natural hair, so it's just hard to do sometimes. Yeah. Did you always have natural hair? Or did you ever go through the perm phase? I never did. So it's crazy. My mom had, I t- I'll talk about my mom for days. She's my best friend. And like, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be here without her. So, um, but with her, she made my sister and I like only wear our curls. And then for special occasions, when we got older, we were allowed to like have our hair straightened. So if it was like our, you know, 13th birthday, 16th birthday or something like that, we could, she can straighten it. But other than that, we did our regular hair. She would braid it or whatever, but no straightening it until, unless it was a, an occasion. Ah, that's incredible. Yeah. I was like, I was literally the opposite. <laughs> My hair was straight like all the time. <laughs> oh, no. well. <laughs> That's yeah. a lot of work. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was also relaxed. Perfect. The creamy yeah. crack. Yep. The cream. We're straightening, you know? <laughs> We're straightening out my hair. So yeah. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah. But it was, it's nice to like, she knows how to do hair. So it, what, I think if I was with like a mom that didn't know how to do hair as much myself, I'm not great at it. Then I probably would have went through that phase. Cause I would have had a hard time every morning and stuff to like trying to do it. Right. Cause there's so many rules are, feel like with yeah. your hair and how it is because everything I feel like gymnastics has to be so tight and quaffed and pulled back and man you get your hair is out of place or anything like that yep exactly <laughs> wow yeah that's oh harsh gosh. that is very harsh <laughs> did you ever oh sorry no you go go ahead I was curious then too so um is also well, like a shady question but like <laughs> <laughs> okay were there ever any like judges that you had growing like going through gymnastics where they maybe felt like they were hard on you so you're like oh i can't wait to do this routine to show them what i really got or anything like that Ooh, probably uh i don't man so for me i went with like i had no fear and then fear set in when i was older there's some kids that like have fear and then they get over it i was kind of like the opposite and um at that time, being a dancer and an actress, I was like, I just want to perform and show off. I hated practicing. I did shit <laughs> when I practiced. Um, but performing like was my favorite. There was one judge out of all of them, and she was the only black judge that I felt like I had to like prove myself because I'm like, you're she was like a really hard judge, but like I could tell she kind of liked me, but would never smile, but like also was hard on me. So I like if I could pick any judge, it would be her that I like, I was like, okay, I need to like, I like her and I know she likes me, but I have to prove myself in order for her to like, give me a good score. So, yeah. Got you. Okay. The only question I have before we go into like, you know, your viral video and Ellen and acting and your web series, I want mm-hmm. to ask about like, cause for me and water polo wasn't really that big of a deal, but diving kind of watching your weight was a big deal. Oh my God. <laughs> what was, what was it like being in gymnastics and like, how was it on, someone's mental mental health especially because i feel like i don't think they like they they force dieting culture really in yeah. gymnastics like a lot of sports do it's not yeah. just gymnastics definitely oh i went through a crazy journey for sure like so throughout my career until i went to college i didn't realize i was like eating healthy and eating good i've always loved sweets and like candy and brownies and cookies like that's just i i <laughs> love those to death right um but then when i went to college everything was super like free for all, like 
you know, you had the buffet for breakfast, lunch, dinner, late night. And I didn't know that I was already like on this healthy pass path before. So then I'm like, yeah, I can eat whatever I want. That's exactly what I did. I ate whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. And I gained about 20 pounds. Um, now I had a full ride scholarship. So as you come is how you're supposed to be. But then I came and I became something different, obviously. Um, so that was like definitely a hard journey. I was definitely put on like a, you know, a regimen. I had to get weight every so often and, you know, what's so all that kind of stuff. Um, I also like didn't compete very much because I just I wasn't me. I like I understand it was definitely hard on the mental, but I do also understand like I wasn't who I was before. Mm -hmm. So I went through like a whole journey with like you know, struggling with all that and being myself just in personality as well and school and gymnastics and weight. And it was just a lot. Um, so then by my senior year, I finally was like, like got myself together and that was like the best year of my life. Um, but yeah, there's been some time, like some teammates that got kicked off for like, you know, gaining too much weight, which it sounds harsh, but if you can't, it, it you know, it's, it's a 50, 50, like it sounds really harsh. Cause like, you came one way and that's how they expect. But then also, you know, you grow and you blossom. Yeah. Right. Like your body's still changing actively. <laughs> right. But then it's like, that's your body's not used to that with doing gymnastics. And that's a lot of weight. So it's like challenging because right. you're flipping in the air and like it. The, exactly. Like, yeah. No matter what you say, like weight does matter when you're flipping in the air. Like it, does. it really does. And like where it's placed to, right. which is awful to say, but like, it's just right. the reality of the sport. Exactly. So it, it was hard, but like, I, I get it. You know, it's, it's a 50, 50, I think it's like, mm -hmm. be how you want, but then, you know, you also need to do that, but it's crazy. Cause now that I've graduated and like years has gone by, I've worked on myself and I'm like, I'm in the best shape since high school, I would say. Um, I'm in like way better shape than I was in, in college. And I'm like way more confident. And like, I don't even, it's just, yeah, I've grown so much from that. So, I mean, I wouldn't be here if I didn't go through that little journey anyway. Fair. Yeah. Fair. So we yeah. should talk about viral or should we go, what should we go into next? Ooh. Victoria. <laughs> Jay Selena's like, oh God. <laughs> oh, actually, okay. So there was one thing too okay. in building to the viral moment. Okay. Um, I think you were mentioning on another podcast about picking how the music went or like how you wanted like different mm -hmm. pops mm -hmm. to happen yes. in your routine. Do you work, how closely do you work with the choreographer in creating oh routines good question um so typically if you're in like club and like elite you'll have someone come pick your music and choreograph I would say throughout that kind of journey I always had a say which was nice or um in a way like because they knew I had a dance background um but then in college it's kind of the same thing they all do your own routine pick your music and stuff but when you're a senior you kind of get a little bit more of a say um and so that's when I went home my junior year summer going into my senior year and I worked with my mom and my sister and we like we're like okay what's like the hot cool thing to do right now and like throw in you know the dancer Sophina because we have not seen her in a long time <laughs> uh, and so we just picked all the cool music threw them out, threw them together, went to like a recording place and like had him cut it. Um, so usually that doesn't happen. Um, but that was the journey that I took. And then my sister and I made up the whole choreography. And then when I got to college that year, I was like, hey, I was really nervous. And I was like, but I, I have a, a song and routine. Can I show you? And can I do this one? And then they were like, well, let's see it. So I did it. And thankfully, they loved it. And then they're like, OK, yeah, you could do it. So that's how mine went. It could have gone the other way. They could have done it themselves. But that's how my journey went. But typically, it's not like that. Gotcha. And was there ever any like song that you requested to do a routine to and they said no, just straight up no? <laughs> or like, no. Were you about it? No? No, because like I, I couldn't. I, I feel like it was like an unspoken rule that you don't like ask for something specific until like okay. your senior year in a way. Like yeah. they could say like, oh, what do you think about this? And maybe you can say, I don't like it or whatever. But yeah, no, you didn't really have that like say. Mm hmm. Not even in like club. Like pre no. no, no, not really. No. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty scheduled and 
they're like a regiment sport, right? Yeah. I mean, nowadays, well, it's crazy because nowadays, I think just the world in general has um, changed because nowadays I have some girls like asking me to choreograph their floor team and they're like, yeah, I got this floor team music. Like, can you choreograph it? And I've choreographed quite a few, but they chose it and I'm dancing how I want to dance with them doing it. So it's changed definitely, but I wouldn't say it was really like that before. But once again, it also depends on like the club you're at and stuff. When do you think that change happened? I know that's kind of a broad question. Yeah. Um, I think, so college has always been like a little bit more of a, like out there gymnastics world. Mm -hmm. But I want to say like after my viral moment and like then there was like consecutive ones after that, that's when it changed, I would say. But, you know, okay. yeah, hmm. <laughs> for the most part. Well, I, I've noticed that a lot of the videos that are viral in gymnastics happen to be you know, black females. Do you think that has anything to do with it too? With oh. being a little more flair into gymnastics. Honestly, like gymnastics, yeah. it, it's a great sport and it always will be, but it's just more- It's exciting know, it's now. More, it's more exciting And now. it feels, I Even think, more, more tangible and like personal relatable too. Relatable, to that relatable. I love it. Yeah, no, 100%. I think it's uh, because there's more black girls. Well, the black girls are doing it. Um, and then it's becoming a trend as a lot of things. I feel like even baby hairs, every race kind of does it now, you know, and it's, it's <laughs> super cool. Oh my gosh. Your edges are like, you know, extensions, <laughs> weaves, wigs, you know, like that all stemmed from black women really. So what? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I definitely think that has a lot to do with it for sure. Okay. So then, yeah, I would say, once your routine went viral, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how did life one change on campus Ooh. and then also in your then personal life? In personal yeah. life yeah. Ooh. Okay. So campus life, I'm a big, like, like I said, I, I am social and I like, I love to perform, which I can kind of say like, then I like attention maybe. <laughs> um, so I definitely got a lot of attention, which was, it was fun and cool. Um, but yeah, on campus was cool. Like people came up and like wanted to take pictures and autographs and that was fun. It wasn't like too like overwhelmingly crazy except for like after competitions. And it was like, that was a long time. And then it was like, we had to do like cut off to like not have to do any more pictures after like five hours later or whatever. But it was super cool and awesome. But then the next competition I was like, I was really nervous because then it was like all eyes on me. And then the first thing I performed was bars and I fell because I was just like so nervous and I was in my head and just like mentally was not there. Um, so that's like mentally how it affected me at first. But I love I mean, I loved it. It was great. It was fun. I will say like after college, you know, obviously like viral moments die down, you know, that's just life. Um, but I don't think I was able to really capture like what a lot of people are able to do when they um, have a viral moment because I had so much time after and didn't really have that much help with like, you know, souping it up. And then like even going on Ellen and stuff like that, like I couldn't take any of the money or like the gifts and stuff. But nowadays they can do that. So, yeah. So it's just like, you know, that NCAA, kind of. Like, sorry. What was, no, it was it because of NCAA? Because I remember when mm -hmm. I was an athlete, I was going to get a because I was on Stranded with Million Dollars, so a reality TV show, nothing to do with sports, but I was gonna get sponsored, I think by like Coca-Cola or something like that, or mm -hmm. like Nike or something like that. Like they were gonna give me a couple, some money to like post about them. And yeah. I remember my athletic team was like, no, you can't do that because they sponsor athletes as well. And you can't have, like, you just can't do that. So is that the reason? Yeah. Exactly, couldn't take money because you were on scholarship and like, that's just the rule. So yeah, so I couldn't, anything I did, I like, I didn't get like anything out of it I mean I did but I didn't you know as, as much as like people do now and nowadays it's awesome like people get paid and they can do whatever and take gifts and money and like yeah so um uh corn <laughs> oh that, that little kid oh my god he has been on he was on He's Drew Barrymore everywhere. yesterday he was on a Chipotle commercial like my Gosh. god it's just about corn too. Right, Damn. right. Our <laughs> mama really can't take you so far. It's really? kind of wild. Oh God, he's, <laughs> he's the cutest kid, but yeah. Awesome. yeah. <laughs> so before we go to our little commercial break, um, I was thinking, can we do, do you think we should do our fuck, marry, kill game? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But we're not really oh. fucking anyone. Yes. Sorry. Right. No, wait, I can say that on this podcast. Oh, oh yeah. no. Like, yeah. It's YouTube too. Uh, oh, you can say it's mature or like, you can uh, say it's eight. Or just bleep it out. 
Oh, I'll just bleep it out. Yeah, I was like, you also say it's not for kids and stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I figured we would do Mary Fuck Kill, make it very hard by being the last three Beyonce albums. So. (laughs) Her face is like, oh. Okay, so. (laughs) Wait, so I had to do like a Fuck Mary Kill for the Beyonce albums? Uh Uh-huh. So Renaissance, Lemonade. And then I decided to skip over Lion King and just go to Beyonce self-titled. Yeah. Oh, no, this is going to be hard. Okay, so how I am with music. I don't typically listen to the whole, okay, people are going to hate me. I don't typically listen to the whole albums of things. I listen to musics of like songs of different things. So I probably don't know all, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know. I probably don't know them all. Got you. I'll give you at least some of the hit songs from each album okay. maybe, and that'll kind of help narrow it down a bit. Mm-hmm. So Renaissance currently, Alien Superstar is like the big one right now that she has. Mm-hmm. Um, For your job? Um. Oh, yeah, well, she has, um, oh, gosh. Oh, no. What's the one? Break My Soul is the other big okay, one. That's the one I really know really well. Okay. Yes, mm-hmm. where she's, yeah, trying to get everyone to quit their job, even though we all got a bills. Um, and then bills. I would say. What are she? Who and then, like, she? I'm That Girl. Uh-huh. Like, like, that's the opening song of it. It's okay. Kind of like bad Bitch Music. Right. Um, Lemonade, biggest songs from there. You've got, um, oh, gosh, Freedom. Actually, yeah. Uh, Formation's the biggest one from that one. Right. So you need her. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I was like, I feel like Freedom with Kendrick Lamar is really big. And then Six Inch Heels with her in The weekend. Six Inch Heels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. So that's on there. Okay. And then for Beyonce's self-titled, Drunk in Love. Oh. Flawless. Partition. Jealous. Okay, that's the one. I'm marrying that one. Okay. 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 I'm marrying that one. I'm killing the most recent, mm-hmm. and I'm fucking the middle one. Got <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking lemonade. Got it. Yes. That that that's it. I like yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fair. And I have a quick uh, before we go to. I have another one. Fuck Mary Kill. Um, but we call it what is it called? Green, go green light. Oh, green light. Um, on pause or okay. canceled. That's our TV shows. Yeah, that's our yeah. version. But I want to know vault, uneven bars, or beam. Okay, we are killing. Oh wait, canceling vaults. Yeah, canceling. you can kill it too. I hate it. <laughs> cancel it. Hate that event. Um, and then we said green and what was the oh, other green light and on pause. Oh, on pause on pause, and it was beam and bars, right? Oh, I don't know. Those two are like a tie. Okay. We will green light bars. Okay. And we'll put on pause beam. Okay. Still means you like beam. It's I just love pause beam. right now. Right. Like Durango. And the only one I absolutely cannot stand is vault. That's it. That other than that, the three have like pros to all. Like I love them all for different things. I thought gotcha. you were gonna say vault, so you confirmed my belief. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-mm. No. Big hunk of letter. No, I'm good. Oh no. <laughs> it's a quickest event too. And like some people are like, oh, you just one and done. I'm like, no, I can't. It's just a no for me. Oh, oh. Yeah. That one never, yeah. That yeah. one always seemed really hard. I don't know. It's like running full force at that saddle just seems not like cute. not. Not cute. Not my vibe. I feel like I do like a little hoo and like hop over it. And you're like, you saw what I did. A little Michael <laughs> Jackson there. Okay. Yeah. A little hee hee. And then you're done. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Perfect segue into a commercial break. Yeah. So we'll do a quick pause. We'll be right back. Okay. And continuing on, we were just talking about... Going into the viral moment and her floor routines. Yes. Viral moments and the aftermath of it, if you will. Yes. (laughs) So obviously got to go on Ellen. Mm -hmm. So did that... Because obviously, like with working in entertainment, having that as a goal too, did that feel kind of like a nice touchstone moment to say as a mark, like a feather in your cap of being on the Ellen show? That was actually my second time on the Ellen. Um, I, I mean, show, right. <laughs> and the first time I was like 12, 13 um, for dancing. It was our dance group called like Mix Five. And um, well, actually I had two different dance groups. Now, now I'm forgetting the name. It might have not been that name, maybe. <laughs> um, but we won like a hip hop international um, when that was like a thing. It might still be a thing. I don't really remember. No, though, I've never like researched it. Um, but we were on Ellen that time as well. We went on like the Maury show and like Tom Joyner and like cool things like that when I was like 12, 13. So then I got to go on again, which is for something completely different on like 
during college. So it was super cool. Um, I was like, yeah, how can I tie this in? Like, I think it was just like preparing me because it was my senior year. Like, okay, this is this really what you want to do? Like you said you did when you first went into like college. And I'm like, yeah, I like it. I like this life. <laughs> and I'm yeah. a little shady right now because her show has ended and it, it was after because of the whole rumors and we're not going to get into it. You can look it up if you really want, blah, right. blah, blah. But what was your experience like on the set? Like, was it enjoyable? Was it really nice? Did you have yeah. any problems? Not talking about Ellen in particular. I'm just talking about production. Just in general. Production sometimes. Right. Sometimes they're really, yeah, sometimes they're busy and sometimes they just can't accommodate to guests. Right. Like, yeah. Um, you know, I get I've been I've asked I've been asked the question quite a few times, like, oh, how was it? It was fine. It was like more of like a business transaction. So when I got there, like, I mean, I had like a nice room, like all that great stuff, but they're like, okay, what you talked about before, that's what you have to say, like in this deal, like don't change your answer. No. Um, and then, you know, I went on and I did what I did and then I left. I didn't get to like talk to her really, or really like meet her before or after it was just like, go in, do your thing and you're out. So it was more like a business transaction. I didn't have like a bad or like, oh my gosh, like she's amazing. They're amazing. Like it was just was like, it was cool. It was fun. It was thrilling and adrenaline rush. And like, I was out. <laughs> Since, cause I, I've done a couple game shows, like, um, let's make a deal. And I have a couple other ones I can't remember, but like, I know it's different than a talk show, but yeah. we pre people don't know this, but you pre rehearse a game show. You, I, <laughs> and I, I will say this, like on my game show that I was on deal or no deal with Wayne Brady, one, he said something that pissed me off on stage. He called me sweetheart. I was doing like a dumb moment and he was like, oh, it's okay, sweetheart. And he touched my shoulder. I was like, I'm about to pop your ass. But um, <laughs> people don't realize that like, they are very organized. Like you, they yeah. already know what you're gonna say. They already tell you what they want you to say. Like it's your right. words, but they kind of frame it. Exactly. Yeah, so. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because I went through like the interview process over the yeah. phone and then they wrote all that down and then was like, okay, so from what you said, we like this yeah. and make sure you say that. So yeah. I feel your words. It's just kind of, it's um, it's like a it's regurgitation of yeah. what you've already, it's so it's not super, well, I mean, not inauthentic, but you're like, but, I've already said this now. So it's not as, doesn't feel as a genuine production of words yeah. coming out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fair. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, well, you already said that you didn't get to keep the swag because NCAA is annoying. So there goes that question of what was in the swag you, bag. Well, yeah. Well, do you know what was in the swag bag that you missed yeah, out you on? No, I wasn't even offered it. Oh, you couldn't even peek into it? I No, like, I, there was no wording of you're going to get a swag bag, but you can't keep it. And there was nothing. I like, wow. no, it was I, like, goodbye. Just, yeah, it was bye bye. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, it would have been nice if I got something like, like a shirt or something. I don't, nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Not even a shirt. Nothing. I got nothing. It's Dang. I, I got a mug when I was the audience member. You can have my mug. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. I'm about to buy it myself. Like, there's no way. You had to buy which, it? Yeah. I'm oh. telling you, it was a very, you're right. It's a very transactional show, which I felt like that as an audience member. Like, oh, yeah. Really, the lights, like the house lights went on, and she was like, thank you all so much. You're all what makes the show great. And then she was gone. <laughs> and they're right. like, okay, to the exit, to the gift shop. I was like, damn. <laughs> There's a gift shop? Yeah. Oh my that's God, I've never, I've never, that's the one thing I've never done is going to like a um, talk show. So yeah. that's something I should do. It's fun. Mm. It can be if they have the right warm up comic. And it's not fun. too long. Cause I've done like talent shows, like, um, God, I don't know what they're called, but whatever. You like sit there for like eight hours. Oh no, not that. Don't do no. that. No. no. Cause I want to see it. Like it wasn't even because I was getting paid. I want to see it. But then I was like, I'm here for eight hours. Yeah. I wasn't like, oh, you think you can dance one, but it wasn't that long either. Oh, my God. Maybe I'm just unlucky. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you might have gotten a bad one. I was saying. Yeah, because that's awful. <laughs> yeah. Like, the reel used to be very fun. The, okay. <laughs> well, when they were on right. RIP. Without um, But circling back to actually <laughs> things that <laughs> <laughs> pertain really to, to you. you. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. You also, in bringing back into the acting, Mm -hmm. You have a you had a web series and you oh, produced so the pilot, which yeah, it was super yeah, it was really funny. funny. But I saw that I in my head I thought it was gonna say like created by or written by, and it wasn't. So I'm curious how that came about. Yeah. So like 
being an actor, actress, whatever, you know, you want to use, um, you sometimes have to put yourself out there. And I already had a presence like on YouTube and stuff like that. So I was like, you know, like I need to like make myself some content, like acting content, not just like my regular like video content. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, I was like, what idea? Like I've really, really wanted a web series. And so um, my friend at the time, um, I was like, oh, what should we do? And I was like, maybe like college one-on-one -on -one and talk about like funny college things or whatever. Um, but I had all, <laughs> I had complained about my roommate at the time a lot. And then he was like, well, how about, you know, we do like a roommate one and it's like everything that you've been going through, but like also like your journey with like being a gymnast and you're not a gymnast anymore and like that kind of stuff. I was like, I love it. So he took like everything I've ever told him. Um, he's an amazing writer. Um, and just like, put it into a pilot and it was like super great and super awesome to film and whatnot. We were going to continue, but then, you know, COVID hit right. or continued and we all went different ways and whatnot. We might plan to finish up, like maybe like make it like a longer episode instead of like do like multiple more, but, um, but yeah, and that was super cool. And so it was like, most of that stuff is like true, but like heightened. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, of course. That's why I thought it was so funny is because like you could tell that you were serious about it, but, like also making light of it at the same time. So exactly. just, like, I, I died. I was like, funny drama. Yes. Yeah. But like, literally all that happened, but just a little bit more extra. That's how I felt. That's mm -hmm. literally how I felt. Um, but yeah, so just made it come to life. <laughs> and I know obviously I mean, be, uh, people may have watched this when they're listening, but since they haven't listened, what was it like transitioning from being an athlete to an actress? And like, what were yeah. some of the biggest struggles that you faced or like criticism or like, right. like for me, for reality TV, people didn't take me seriously. Did you experience mm. anything like that? Yeah, I think I went through more of like a, who am I thing um, crisis in a way, because it was like, okay, yes, I'm a gymnast, always will be a gymnast. But at that time I was like, only a gymnast and like people couldn't take me as anything else but a gymnast like you're that gymnast girl with blue hair oh you're that gymnast girl like all that stuff and even when I would like put content out like no one cared about anything else but gymnastic stuff and so that's kind of what I put into the pilot as well it's like I'm not a gymnast anymore although I still do gymnastic stuff but it's like guys I'm a person like I'm funny I'm cool like I'm not like just only flipping and dipping like so um yeah a lot of frustration with that trying to figure out like where I fit in and that and even like with auditions sometimes like you know I feel like sometimes athletes get a stereotype you know like even like The Rock you know he was you know in all that and then became an actor so I'm pretty sure he went through something like that but yeah so that's kind of like the phase I was like I would go to auditions and a lot of times at first I was getting like a lot of gymnastics auditions or like athletic auditions yeah. I'm like, mm. give me more like even my agents at the time I have different ones now but like I felt like only saw me as a gymnast too and I'm like there's just so much more to me and I want people to see that and I feel like people now are but at the time that was like a, a interesting transition to figure out mm -hmm. yeah i can imagine yeah especially around the viral moment like that that probably especially the six months after probably were it was just like everyone was honed in on that, that one video of you. which is like, not which is a part of you but it's not yeah. anything about you it just yeah. happens to be maybe one of the most viewed things or at least like, how they were it. initially introduced to you if for some yeah. people so then they're mm -hmm. like oh this is, but this is what I know her as. <laughs> and some people yeah. fall off with that. They like, they ha they start following you for one reason, like reality TV or gymnast or, you know, acting. And then you yeah. transition to something else because you grow as a human being. <laughs> like <laughs> it happens to all of us people. <laughs> and they, they're like, mm, you know, I, I really just liked her gymnastics content. Like, I don't really want to see this acting or I don't really want to see her, you know, I don't baking a cupcake. And right. It's just like, wait, you guys, you, you, we all do this. Like, we're we're not just an actor. We're not just. We have other properties. Right. So right. That, yeah, I could definitely see why that was frustrating. Exactly. Exactly. There's more to us. Yes. You know? Not one dimensional. So is that kind of one of the focuses of the web series too? Is showing all the different dimensions, and then is the plan for it to show focus on the roommate aspect and just the living situation? Was it gonna? Is the plan to kind of branch out into? other sides of you to show yeah um it, the plan was just to showcase like me blossoming into like not caring what people think about just me being a gymnast or whatever like just showing me wanting to be me whether it was like oh I'm gonna you know dance or paint or act or whatever so kind of like showing 
the motivational side of like growing into yourself was really the the big aspect and then also with like the little humorous parts of the roommate thing we didn't fully know which route we wanted to go with afterwards with like the roommate part um yeah. was she gonna move out was the boyfriend gonna come back I don't know mm -hmm. so still playing with that but yeah okay cool well, hopefully it gets back up and running. It was so funny. So yeah, I would love to see more episodes of it. I know COVID's kind of taken so many yeah. things that have become so much harder to produce stuff. Yeah. Even though it's kind of on a, as a, a downhill to an extent where people aren't, you know, the hospital rates aren't going up and yeah. stuff. But, but it's, you know, it's, still... it's going to linger around yeah. for a while. And extra precautions yeah. you have to take. It's just a new flu now. Exactly. Yeah. Literally what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay. Do you mm -hmm. have other, because it's going to be like, what's, so what's next? No, what, or is no, there sorry, anything that you've gonna... wanted? Or is there anything that you haven't done yet that you'd like to do? What's your dream job? Like your yeah. dream, it doesn't have to be overall, like, like give me a show or give me a yeah. particular genre of movie you'd want to do. Like be specific. Yeah. Okay. There's two sides. So if we're going like show wise, you know, I, I like, I would love to like have like my own like that's so raven that would be amazing but like other shows that like i love that i've auditioned for and even got like pinned for and stuff was like like all american or like things like that i don't know if you've seen like trinkets and like um grownish and blackish like so like a rom-com well not not rom-com dramedy type of feel like i love those kinds of things um but then if we're going like movie wise like i want to be like J jackie chan and like stunt in my own movies as well. Oh, yeah. so I think that would be super cool. So yeah, you know. See, so she does all her own stunts. Would be right? super cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that that's like my my ultimate like goal dream, I suppose. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. I that could totally cool. see that. I could, especially the That's a Raven thing. I could right. one hundred percent seeing you lead a show like that. Oh my god! <laughs> like, yes. Uh. <laughs> More shows like that again. <laughs> Hello. Also that, yeah, I feel like we really do. I mean, granted, I mean, I'm not actively watching Disney Channel, but in my heart, I feel like their shows aren't as good anymore <laughs> for kids. So I imagine they need this content. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say so. But also like nowadays things are more like, you know, audience are is like are more sensitive to things. So right. like I'm, I've watched a couple things and I'm like, we cannot do that now. That's quite outrageous for like our now society. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. Examples, like I, my favorite movie is White Chicks. Oh, I could yeah. never remake that, right? Oh, no, never. No, no. That, could not. No. 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 Could not. And then I would say mine is another one that can't be remade now. Is It's so old. Heavyweights. Oh. Uh, that I was obsessed with. It was literally about, it was like a bunch of the kids from Mighty Ducks, but they all go to fat camp. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay i remember now i remember i was like there's no way that anyone would be comfortable like making fun of like a fat camp like there's no, no way that that would not happen. at all not at all do you have a controversial fave <laughs> <laughs> i don't at the moment i do not i do not <laughs> good good for you <laughs> yeah be safe fine why don't you <laughs> you're not really like no <laughs> uh, guys off screen she said <laughs> <I'm> just <laughs> <laughs> wait okay so then what's um what's next yeah, what's, for you that we haven't seen on the imdb or what's up? that you can talk about yeah that you can talk about Yay! So what can i talk no about lawsuits. you said what is it no lawsuits no. nothing oh, gosh. Anything we, don't, we don't want any of that no. um no. Let's, man that's a good question like i feel like i have a lot of things in like the back works but like nothing that is coming at the moment i just been like grinding real hard and whatnot and had some really great opportunities like i i'm like in every aspect like i do like some nutrition stuff but i also do like workshops with gymnastics and like help kids and like go to events and do like motivational speaking for kids and stuff like that but then i also do like my acting and then the goal is to actually i was the goal is to plan um a new web series as well so i might be working on that in the new year schedules didn't line up this year but just keep a lookout on all platforms and you'll see some stuff coming about so. beautiful oh yeah drop all of your your socials your handles so people can find you we will put it here on the screen right on i can't reach over there people but it's no it's the other other way other, there Implied you go hand continuing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, i actually yeah. have one quick question because i used to work with kids in summer camp i'm really interested Ooh. how is it working <laughs> 
How is it working with kids in sports? Because honestly, as an athlete, we're tough to work with sometimes. Right, right. You know, I feel like sometimes the tougher people are the parents. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. So like, I know I did some camps at some point um, and a kid hurt themselves, but you're going to get hurt in gymnastics. And like, she wanted to like try and blame me when the kid is the one that bent her arms and like skid her face. Like I was just there. Like you, I'm, <laughs> So I feel like that's sometimes like the hard, right, the hardest part. Um, but other than that, like, I think another hard part is just knowing that every kid is different. You know, you got the shy ones, you got the, you know, really outspoken ones with sassy, you know, mouth. And then you have the ones that like are like, skill wise, like really good. And some are that are like the same level, but just different. So really showcasing their, you know, strengths. And so like no one feels like left out or feels bad about like, I can't do this, but she can like the comparison thing. I feel like I do my best to like show kids to be confident in themselves and like not to compare because we don't want to continue like, you know, the jealousy that comes about with like women with women or guys and whatever it is. But um, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> and if a little, I mean, obviously, okay, our audience is not little girls, but the little girl that was watching this right now and she wanted to either go into gymnastics or entertainment yeah. what would be your first suggestion to her or would you what would you warn her about to watch out for that you've experienced that you don't want her to experience there's and we'll no leave way. it we'll, we'll finish on this question <laughs> oh my god so hard. much uh, yeah there's there's literally so much but my little slogan is you know you are unique and really right. hone into that and don't like trying to be anybody else because there's no one like you um and the world is your playground so go and have fun if you're not having fun obviously you know you're gonna have some hard work to do and whatnot there's gonna be pros and cons but like have fun and enjoy it the world is your playground and it's life so yeah that would be my little the uniqueness in that i love the ending of that it's yeah. life just it's life that's it's i mean life. yeah i mean you have to take life step at a time so yeah. Yeah. sports right. and entertainment too yeah well Perfect. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us. Yeah, thank you. We really appreciate it. And we, we're new, so we will be excited. I don't know. What's My, happening? I, I just had a little great <laughs> part at the end. It's a great way to end the show when your brain Thanks for having me. A couple <laughs> interviews. Like, you know, it happens, people. Love. Love. <laughs> Love. Peace. Love. Happiness. Yes. It's life. It's It's life. <laughs> At the bottom too. <laughs> it's life. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Sophina. Yes. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. Okay. Bye. I'm gonna Bye.